Hello friends that live within the internet. My name is John and in this video, I will show you some tips which will help you become a better API developer within Visual Studio Codes using a brand new extension that I'm hoping you've never heard of before. Now, if you're anything like me, you're working with APIs all day long. It doesn't make a difference if we're building new components using the Fetch API, using Axios. Maybe you need to have some queries about what the data shape of your API is. Maybe you're debugging a production issue. Something's gone wrong and you need to query an API to make sure the correct data is being returned. Now, if you're like me, a typical workflow is do your coding in Visual Studio Code. And then when we need to test our APIs, maybe we fire up Postman and then we're sort of tabbing between the two. Instead of doing that, would it not be ideal if we could just do everything within Visual Studio Code? And that is what you're going to learn how to do within this video. Huzzah! Now, if you haven't come across my videos before, again, I'm John. I do weekly YouTube videos on web development, productivity, programming, all that bonds of stuff. So what I uh, recommend you do is smash the subscribe button right now, and that will make you a legend. So assume you do that, let's have a look at how we can improve your API skills within Visual Studio Code. The extension that we're going to be looking at today is called Thunder Client. I like it, it's a solid name. And Thunder Client has only been released about two months ago. However, as you can see, it's already been downloaded nearly a quarter of a million times. So this is a extension worth checking out. Installing Thunder Client is super simple. Open up your VS Code. Then go to the extension manager, type in Thunder Client. There we go. Click the install button. Boom, job done. Now, as you can see, after installing Thunder Client, we now get this little icon in the sidebar. And clicking on that will open up Thunder Client. Woo! Now, as you can see, the Thunder Client dashboard here looks very similar to Postman. So we've got a big green button which says new request, which I'm sure you can guess what that does. Below, we've got a list of other APIs that we can test against. We've got collections, so we can save our APIs in groups. And we've also got environment variables. Hmm, exciting stuff. So let's have a look. So clicking on new request, you can see that we can have it, well, a screen very similar to Postman again. So in the top here, we can add in our API URL. We can test our REST endpoints, so we can do a GET, a POST, a PUT. Now we can add in query strings, so we can put in the parameter TEST and JOHN. And as you can see, as I'm opening, adding these query string parameters, you can see that they're automatically getting appended to the URL at the top. Now we can also add in any API headers. So if you're doing authentication, one API thing you have to do a lot, start adding in some authentication within the HTTP headers. You've also got this whole section of adding basic auth or OAuth. And there's also the ability to write some tests. Now, the other nice thing is we can pass in body data. So you can pass in JSON directly. You can pass in XML text. You can basically do whatever you want to do. So if we click send, as you can see, we've got this example API. Clicking on the little parentheses will allow you to view your request. So as you can see, we've passed in um, test equals drum. When I did that search, hopefully you noticed that the searched API list was updated. Now what we can do is click on our API, click on the little ellipses. And then from here, you can see that we can do save to collection. Now save to collection will open up this screen. So we can give it a name, let's call it video example. Now we can add it to a collection. So I've got test and idio. So if I just do another one, call it video. Now one thing to be aware of when you're creating this um, plugin and you're using it, when you click submit, you might have this save successfully. You can now close the window. However, it doesn't actually update. Looking in collections itself, you can now see that we've got this video collection. Clicking on there, you can see that we've got my video example. Beautiful. Now, I also mentioned you can use environment variables. This is really handy. So clicking on environment variables, you can see that I've created two already, one called staging, one called production. To create a new environment, you just click on this little three-liney job here. And you can see create new environment, call it what you want, development. So in here, you can see that I can add in my variables. So let's say base URL, let's call it development. We can click save. And as you can see, I've got one for production and one for staging. Now to make the variable set active, 
again click on these three little ellipses right here so we do the three little ellipses for development and then set as active you can see this stars now gone by development so this is our active record set now you might be wondering how can i use this variable within my api request so now if i just go back to our api in here instead of having the word drawn and test what i can do is double a bracket like that certainly a couple of braces and as you can see we've got drawn base url you can see it's green now so it's using a parameter if i click send because we're using the development active key set clicking on the parentheses you can see that development has been passed right there if i didn't uh, mess it up a little bit and if i go back to environment and let's say let's make staging active so click on the ellipses set as active go back to our collections this is still set as base url if i do a search you can see that the value has been updated so this tool is going to be a productivity booster for everyone. Instead of having to tab out, go to Postman, you can see that you can create your collections. So when you're building your application, you can have everything you need here. You can create variables to switch between all your different environments. You can actually save all the environment variables to a file, which is really nice. And as you can see, just in terms of general API testing, you can pretty much do everything you need to do. So. That is it. This extension for me is a must have. I recommend you go and download it right now before you do anything else. So Thunder Client, big thumbs up. Today's video has been short and sweet. However, I do think Thunder Client is a game changing productivity tool, which means you can just do more and more things within Visual Studio Code. So what do you think? Do you agree with me? Are you excited about this extension as I am? Please leave your comments below because I would love to hear them. So we've got to that stage in the video where I need to plug my own stuff. So the first thing I'd say is if you haven't already, sign up to my free newsletter, link below. Every Sunday I send out an email, it just has a load of interesting tech news and things that I found interesting for that week and links to my content. So it's free, it's easy to unsubscribe if you don't like it. So I recommend you subscribe. Again, if you want to be an absolute legend, and this is the only way that I will think of you as a legend, is hit that subscribe button now so you can carry on seeing my weekly updates on web productivity. Also, if you want to do me a solid and you want to help me trick YouTube into sharing my videos to more people, hit that like button because it does help me out. Otherwise, I hope you've got some value from this video. I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are and happy coding.